Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. I see angels descending. Bring from above echoes of mercy and whispers of love. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, perfect submission. All is at rest, I in my Savior am happy and blessed. I am watching and I'm waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness and lost in His love. Oh, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. I say today I'll be preaching about the cost of negligence. Um, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. The Bible says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great this salvation which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you again, submitting ourselves in your presence that we can take us as instruments of righteousness, that as we preach the gospel, sounding the trumpet of Jubilee, your children, Father, may come out of their cages, may escape their situations, may receive salvation and redemption through the power of your blood. Father, may you take over us fully in their situations, in their circumstances. May you reveal yourself mightily to them. Even those that don't know you, those that have not given themselves to you, Lord Father, may they do so, Lord Father. May they be elevated out of a life of sin to a life of victories, a life of redemption, a life, Father, where they will see your power, Lord, working in their lives. I commit them to your hands and the whole service in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We may be seated. The Bible here is saying, how shall we escape if we neglect so great the salvation? I believe everyone desires to escape their situation everyone desires to escape from a sinful life escape from oppression or escape from cycles of failure escape from uh, sickness everyone wants an exodus into a higher life somehow but here the bible is saying how can we escape if we neglect the salvation so everything has been done for us the price has been paid it is finished but we as christians sometimes are negligent now, if you neglect your soul, your neglected soul cannot fix itself. I remember a story of someone who was, um, we, we had a dream, they were going to an ATM, as they were going to withdraw their money there, there is some greasy dirty man who came to their car and was some, asking for something. Then the man kept pushing him away. Then he went to the ATM, withdrew. This man kept persistently following. And then when he finally went to his car, he was pushing this man away. Then when he entered, he wanted to know, but by the way, who are you? Asked this man. Then in that dream, it ended like, uh, I'm your neglected spiritual life. So the man was well up, well dressed and well financed, but his spiritual life was so neglected and so crazy and so dirty. Now, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given by prophecy, and by laying on of hands. Now, Timothy was told by Paul that neglect not the gift that is in you. Everyone has a special something put in them by God that they must never neglect. I remember this scripture when I woke up, it was a dream, 
and um, God was telling me that neglect not the gift that is in you. So as soon as I woke up around five or so, there's a brother who called me with a situation. I didn't get chest pains. He phoned right at that time and he says, Brother, I believe that if you pray for me, I'll be healed. I prayed for him that time and he confessed. He told me even after some time that he was healed instantly. So I was noticing that when God puts something in you, it's for a purpose. And nothing will stop that purpose because Timothy is told that you must give attention to reading and exhortation and doctrine. He's not going to be a negligent someone. He's going to meditate on the word. Uh, give attendance to reading and exhortation and doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in you. So as a Christian, neglect not prayer. Don't neglect your purpose or your spiritual life, your prayer life. Your, don't neglect the inner man. Don't neglect repentance. Always do everything. In every um, field, there is a cost of negligence. If you are a medical someone, you can be sued for cost of negligence. If someone dies and it was in your hands and you could have done something that you didn't do. So in the songs of Solomon, uh, chapter 1, verse 6, it says, They made me a keeper of vineyards, but my vineyard I have not kept. Whatever you do in this life, never neglect your own life. Uh, even if you preach to others, let your life be pure and clean. If you are a pastor, make sure even your home is in order also. Don't ju just water other vineyards and forget to, to water your own vineyard. Now in Proverbs 24 verse 30, it says, I went uh, by the fields of the slothful and by the vineyards of a man that is void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown with thorns and nest nettles and um, covered with the face thereof. And the stone wall was broken down. So he's going to see the vineyard of a someone who is lazy, who is negligent. The spiritual life of someone who is negligent. If your spiritual life would be viewed in the light of the scripture, it was grown with thorns and what your prayer life has grown thorns and webs and and it's the stone walls they are broken and i saw and considered it well and i looked upon it and received instruction he learned a lesson from the negligence what it had this vineyard which was supposed to be producing but it was now nothing because of negligence now if a surgeon is operating and is negligent and he leave a scissors inside or something a mosquito or whatever he, he is going to be sued for negligence so when we are handing the word of god we must not be negligent to teach all the doctrines that the message stands for paul says i have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of god the background i'm using here is uh, it shows a, a bible that is dusty that is going to be that is wiped don't neglect your bible it shows a house that is neglected that is is growing with the trees and, and thorns now the, the the parable that was given by christ of the talents someone was given five the other one was given three then the other one was given even one talent so when they were given that one they went and hid it in the ground they were negligent whatever god gave you must be in action must be in use must be multiplying and actually when the master came back and he looked at that one ten manners and uh, the ten talents that were given out he says to that one who has given one and he did he says you should have put it in the bank if you are not going to be working to multiply it so he was cast into outer darkness because of negligence so you, there is a high cost for being unproductive or for being negligent now um in second peter chapter 1 verse 12 it says wherefore uh, i will not be negligent to put you he always in remembrance of the things though you know them and that you may be established in the present truth so negligence is destroying us uh, many times the devil uh, uh, specializes on our negligence there are many things that we know as christians but we're not just doing them if you are doing what you know and applying what you have read then your life will be fruitful through and through backsliding generally first begins with neglect of private prayer if you are not praying how do you think you will escape you you find people are bound and they are phoning pastors pastor this has happened this has happened um 
my house is now uh, there are someone's my house being taken you are negligent actually negligence is in many fields if you neglect to pay your debts when someone's come you think it's the devil <laughs> but you are negligent you are supposed to pay your loans pay uh, be diligent that's why the bible says be sober and vigilant because your adversary the devil comes like a roaring lion now do not give the devil a foothold don't allow him any space in your life and when you come to the presence of god don't be negligent use the uh, to your advantage the presence of god when simon the pharisee had the presence of god he had christ even in his house but he was negligent he did not wash his feet jesus was there until someone who was a, a filthy living someone a woman she saw an opportunity and she used it now don't neglect to do what is good and to share for god is pleased with such sacrifices now the prophet says but there's one thing that you just cannot inherit you, you have got to accept it that is eternal life you only do that by following jesus by a born again experience don't neglect that if there is anything that you must seek first it's salvation being born again receiving the holy spirit then all these other things shall be added unto you he says certainly if you neglect um how can we escape if we neglect such salvation neglect to eat you will die neglect to take a corner you will wreck you neglect to make a milk a cow it should go dry you neglect your teeth they will be pulled out so you pay for your neglection um Brandon Tepanik and you visitors let me tell you something you neglect to testify for the glory of god you neglect to give god the praise and glory you will find yourself cold and formal and backslid in one of these days how shall we escape if we neglect as a christian make sure there is no negligence in your life now negligence is in many areas there are neglected gifts that's why paul, paul says don't neglect the gift in you and they are neglected ministries you know your ministry is to go out and preach the gospel and you are seated down they are neglected teachings we have taught people the message but it's up to you to apply what you are taught and they are neglected marriages if you neglect your marriage and you don't put much to it you would think the devil is fighting when you are oh, the one who is fighting your marriage so you you must not neglect the needs of your partner whether it's your wife or your husband don't neglect the the needs that they have and um, if you say i will do this if you promise someone that i will do this don't neglect that because your words will become a lie so um there's a scripture in ezekiel 33 that it talks about when the watchman sees a sword coming he's he's elevated he's in a higher position he sees a sword coming if it doesn't sound the trumpet the blood of the people will be upon him because that's negligence if a pastor is seeing people living in sin and it doesn't blast sin it doesn't stand for the truth that is negligence the blood of the people will be upon that pastor now because he saw a sword coming but he did not warn the people now let us not neglect our gathering together let us forsake not our gathering together and martin luther said if i should neglect prayer but a single day i should lose a great deal of fire of faith if you want your faith to be always on fire start with prayer before you touch anything start with the prayer don't neglect prayer john wesley said the neglect of prayer is a grand hindrance to holiness it, as soon as long as you are not praying there will be things heaping up imaginations thoughts filthiness vulgarity that will be heaping up because you have neglected the power that should take away those things now charles Spurgeon said neglect of private prayer is the locust that devours the strength of the church when a church is not prayerful it is it is very weak anything that comes it takes you now someone says do not neglect prayer however busy you may be it doesn't matter how busy you are you must be busy praying because you are a busy person you need you have more reason to pray because you are going to be doing a lot of things someone says a, a week of neglect can cause you a year of repair if you just neglect things of god for a short time the repair the damage that happens will need you a longer time to repair 
Now, even if you are busy with things of God, be careful that you don't neglect something. Moses was almost killed by the angel. He was busy in ministry until he did not, he almost forgot to circumcise his child. Now, as pastors, if you are busy in ministry, make sure charity begins at home. Make sure at home they are filled with the Holy Ghost. Make sure at home they are led to the levels in the spirits that are higher. So, it took Zipporah there to say, um, to stand and uh, circumcise and say bloody husband now if succeeding as a pastor means failing as a parent you have already failed as a pastor <laughs> because if you are going to be successful and win the whole world and you neglect your own children no matter how busy you are whether you're a busy engineer or busy doctor never neglect family time quality time with your family to impart life to them now it is possible to serve in ministry without neglecting your family no matter how busy you are going to interpose now make sure the family is also on fire for god now the foolish virgins were very negligent they knew that the bridegroom is coming but they only took oil, a little oil and it ran out now you must be very diligent and vigilant the bible says a diligent hand will bear rule but if you don't pay attention to detail you will never be successful in your life now that's why the bible says hold fast to what you have heard let no one take your crown hold fast to your confession whatever you do as a christian hold fast don't be slack don't be dilly darling don't be wishy-wash about it and don't be dilatory but do it with all might the bible says let us hold and servingly the hope we profess for he who has promised is faithful says let us hold fast to our profession because he that promised is more than faithful now there is a cause there is loss that comes with uh, um, just being negligent if you build your house not on a rock when the storms come the whole house no matter how big and story it is because you are not diligent enough to have a solid foundation to say on christ the solid rock i stand you lose and there's the, if you build your house on wrong foundation it's going to crack so make sure you are not negligent you are going to take all steps in repentance all steps in making right in, in, re, in making all things right and being baptized in the name of jesus christ receiving the holy ghost there are no shortcuts to that now the prophet says there are many scrap heaps of ministers that we see on the gospel highway it's because they are doing it the wrong way if you see cars uh, becoming scrap heaps right there someone is negligent you can have your 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 expensive car maybe the latest car royce and royce whatever it is as long as it has a, a thread the tires that have threads it's going to wreck so you must never be negligent even in your spiritual life but you must put to action what you have heard about the gospel now we come to david a man who was very uh, a man after god's heart he did a lot of things and we cannot subtract anything on david he still remains as a mighty man of god but there was a time when it was time for battle at that time he remained home you see that is the first hint of danger that when people are doing something for the lord and you happen to be seated down you are going to look at the wrong things at that time so he became negligent he was up there walking um on top of his house there and then he saw the naked but shepherd then that's where sin started and now the prophet comments also that it was both sides of negligence he says how could david take uriah's wife the beautiful but shepherd when he had 500 of his own but he's seen here taking a bath and there the negligence now she also has negligence as much as david was negligent uh, she forgot to pull the sheds down when she was taking a bath and she knew that the king would make it made a trip there every day down that wall so sister also don't be negligent dress like a christian walk like a christian so that you are not guilty of the last of other people now there was a time when david wanted to do a right thing and he was bringing the ark from the house of opitidom to come to be in service for israel 
he, he thought of the right thing but he was supposed to call the levites to carry the ark then he called the wrong people and then because of the cost of negligence we see the dying of Uzzah there he tried also to touch the ark and he died there so many times when you do the right the, the right thing and we are negligent in the way there is consequences now there is a woman who rolled over a child when she was asleep that is another form of negligence i think people should be taught how to sleep when they have a baby <laughs> she slept too much uh, such people don't wake up to pray and she rolled over the baby and she tried to swap that was another form of negligence and now when samson uh, yet revealed his secret and was disarmed by delilah don't allow the devil to disarm you don't don't allow to don't release your supernatural secret and this is the cost that it cost him his life actually because he released the secret now negligence reaches all platforms they are neglected homes they are neglected careers uh, you young people are starting keep starting and starting don't neglect your career and they are neglected children when parents are there but they are not giving attention to the children they are neglected family altars and they are neglected parents when children are here it's parents are suffering and you have your living parents do something because there will come a time when you don't have them anymore and they are neg ne neglected a uh, spiritual life you see no matter how spiritual you are don't neglect some things uh, if you are even if you come to me that i pray for you to pass the exams you still have to read you, you don't neglect your study life you then because the bible says it's the little foxes that ruin the vineyard the little things that we don't do what we neglect is what will pull the whole building down the devil waits for that unguarded moment when you have not done what you are supposed to do because when you know that something is good and you don't do it it becomes sin it's iniquity the prophet says iniquity is something that you know that you ought to do and will not do it that's right every man knows that he's got to be born again by the spirit of god you've got to receive the holy ghost uh, to turn it down um, the same as to turn jehovah of the old testament down in, in that day or jesus in his day the same penalty is worse if you turn down the holy ghost so if you know that you must be baptized in the name of jesus christ and you are still not baptized it means that's negligence you are living a life of negligence you know many people have wrecked their lives just because of negligence they know exactly what they are supposed to do you know in business if you are negligent you always pay penalties because of not paying at the right time so why are people negligent it's because uh, they put no value to what they are doing so if this message has value let's pray every morning wake up and pray in the midnight pray let's invite people let's put everything let's give the greatest ns heed to the things that we have heard because you have seen value you are convinced and you are concerned you don't allow the devil to disarm you laziness is a cause of negligence a lazy man will never achieve anything in life and also if your priorities are not right if your priorities some uh, priority pr prioritizing something above this message you always neglect the message you are serving two masters now there's a good story in the bible about the old testament and the, uh, the in the old testament about the young prophet and the old prophet the young prophet knew that the old prophet was backslidden he was an elder but he was backslidden now the young prophet was told to go and prophesy against the altars of baal he had the supernatural he will speak and when they would try to resist him the hands will, will wither god was confirming the ministry of that young prophet but one day when god had told him not to go back and eat in the house of the old prophet so then when he was going back home he was told that no god has changed his mind come and eat at home and he paid dearly for negligence if you do anything against what god told you to do it's negligence if you do anything against your conscience that is negligence and now the spirit of god came to the old prophet and he says that said the lord because you have done what I, what the old prophet told you to do a lion will eat you the lion ate him 
and left the donkey there. That is the cost of negligence. When God tells you to do something, do it with all might. It even reminds me of another scripture in the Bible in the days of the school of prophets. There is someone, a prophet from the school of prophets who told another man that beat me up now I want to go and prophesy. The man was negligent. He did not beat the prophet. So he was eaten by a lion. It was supposed to be time to work on the prophet. Don't be negligent. When God says do something, do it with all might. Right. Actually, even when we are fighting in the medical with this pandemic of COVID, the greater part of the spread is negligence. When people know what to do and they don't do what they are supposed to do. Now, the, uh, there is someone who says, a man should never neglect his family for business. Even if you are looking for man, uh, you must never neglect your family. Get time and quality time with your family. And our children, when we give them over to the screen and to the cell phone because we don't we want them to we are busy and we're given our cell phone for paper pig and choo choo tv and all those things um we don't know the pop-ups that are coming that is also another form of negligence because our children are bombarded by things that we can avoid so as a parent you must serve and filter what your children are hearing and what they are seeing because when they see these things uh, you start having young people who are um, uh, lesbians or who are uh, active in sexual things in your home, in your ignorance because of your negligence so even you, when you always are on the phone, not on the word of God that is negligence of your soul, as much as you, you want exciting things for your body never neglect your soul now, love your parents and treat them with loving care don't neglect your parents. Uh, you will only know their value when you see an empty chair. While you have a chance, while you have your parents, and don't neglect them. Treat them well. And protect your marriage from unintentional neglect. As a husband, you can neglect your wife and be with her all the day long. Because you are not attending to her needs. You must know her needs and answer those ones. And as a wife, you can neglect your marriage while you are in your marriage every day long. Now, never neglect the family altar. The family altar can alter the family. It can remove all evil things from the family. That's why the Bible says, Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. Because, um, I think that's almost six. The Bible is showing that you can live a relaxed and dilatory negligent life where you are always procrastinating and nothing is moving. As a Christian, don't be a negligent Christian. What you see will affect your soul. And filter your dressing. Filter what you see, your magazines, your books, what you see in your phone, your messages. Filter them. Because you must not allow the devil to jump up and down in your life. But you must have a purpose. Never neglect your tapes. Listen to the tapes every day. If you neglect your time to listen to the sermons, soon it will show. Negligence will show publicly in an embarrassing way. How are you going to escape? Never neglect the series book. Never neglect the church edges book. Never neglect uh, seven weeks of Daniel. All spoken words. That's what is given to empower you in this age. Read your Bible and pray and be always oiled up as a Christian. And you will see things happening. Be like the Bereans. The saints in Beria were, like, were not like those of Thessalonica. They were searching the scriptures daily to see if these things are. Now, these days we have the things that are distractors. That are taking away our attention from things that matter. We are addicts of Facebook. We are addicts of WhatsApp. We are addicts of social media. We are addicts. We are always calling for fellowship with the man, but not fellowship with God. This is what we have lost in generations past. Men were men of prayer. Women were women of prayer. That's why things were happening. That's why there were visitations supernatural. That's why their quality of life was above the quality of life spiritually of the people who are living today. Never neglect your spiritual meals. If you neglect this body, you know, negligence is in all platforms. If you neglect your body and you work so hard, so hard, so hard, I've learned it. Uh, your body one day will wreck 
your body will just collapse one day uh, because of negligence. This body is lost. It must rest. It must also live a healthy life, lifestyle. It must also eat healthy foods. Now, but if you neglect your spiritual diet, you will have spiritual malnutrition. You, you will see yourself bored of church services. You will see yourself not growing spiritually, but always going round in circles. Someone said, if you, are always, if you think you are too young to think about God, at one time you think you are too self-sufficient to think about God, and you think you are too uh, happy to think about God, sometimes you are too busy to think about God, sometimes you are too tired to think about God, there will be a time when you need to be too late to think about God. You neglected the number one thing, is one thing is needful. Other things are all distractors. If you are doing something, focus on what you are doing so that you don't lose. Now, when the Bible says, how can we escape if we neglect the salvation? Uh, we learn the story of Lot. Lot's wife almost escaped. Well, as long as the salvation or the instructions of the angels were with her, she was escaping. But when she neglected the instructions and looked back, she could not escape. She became a pillar of salt. The message told us, look on this. If you neglect the message that revealed mystery truths that will literally turn your hearts back to the fathers, you're going to be just a Chechen, not a Christian. Your standards and your quality of Christianity will be very, very shallow. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, I want to close very soon. But I say unto you that, uh, for an, uh, that every idle word men speak they will give an account of it so if you are negligent in statements one day you will meet the words that you are saying because every word that you speak every idle word if you are negligent in speech rather you rather not promise if you are not going to fulfill your promise if you just say tomorrow i will send you a time and then tomorrow you are negligent to do what you say you do is you are now a liar because of negligence so you rather not say anything if you are not going to do what you are saying about Nelly Sanders she was negligent at one time because when she heard the old music that used to attract her now if your weakness was music eh, guard that weakness don't be where you are tempted because this body is not accept a chain is as strong as this weakest link when she went there the demons went on here because demons take advantage of your negligence that unguarded moment but she repented and the spirit was cast out the prophet talks about that man who had a lot of gold he had won a lot of gold so the man wanted to rest and sleep very well as he was resting the dog was barking because the dog was not negligent it was seeing thieves coming to kill the man thieves were coming to take the gold but he killed the barking dog when your conscience barks at what you are trying to do, don't kill it. When something tells you mm, your statement is wrong, don't kill that conscience. When something tells you you are not reading, you are not praying enough, don't kill that conscience because the thieves will take over and kill you. Now, the Akan's negligence costed the whole Israel um, about 16 men or so because of negligence of one man who hid a Babylonian garment. Your negligence can cost the church of a good atmosphere. We pray for someone and they are not healed because they may be an archon in the church. Now, when that king was told to shoot the arrow of deliverance and shoot more arrows, he became tired and negligent and he did not shoot many as supposed to. Because negligence means uh, your reaction or your action um, should be as expected in that situation. Now, he shot three and stopped. And the prophet was wroth with him because he says, you are going to destroy Syria. Now, many of you are complaining in your life that things are mo not moving because you expect God to be moving when you are not moving. You are negligent. You, are, you know yourself that you, don't, you have not read the Bible even today. You know yourself that you have not prayed for more than 10 minutes. The only time you pray when, when there's a when, when there's prayer meeting at church and the minister is saying yes receive it yes claim it when you are alone with god that's when you can measure 
your caliper spiritually. Now, when we say Mr. Anderson missed it, when something is happening, when God is visiting his people, be alert, be vigilant, be ready, be ex expectant. Because if you neglect the presence of God, you go out empty when others are going full. Now, uh, the prophet says that some time ago, there were brothers that he told that there is oil, brother Demos and uh, the other brothers, that there is oil in Kidaki. He says, if you go there, you'll find oil. The brothers were too slow to go. That is negligence. If there is something that can benefit you and you put it to tomorrow, that is negligence. The brothers, when they finally went, the place was taken. There were oil fields there. And when the prophet told them it was the right time to move, now the prophet also talks, when, when I say negligence, it affects all fields, business, marriage, uh, your exams, it affects you um, uh, in how you dress. If you are negligent and you are, you are on the scruffy side and the sisters say no, uh, it, it's because of the cost of negligence. Right, what is happening is um, the prophet told, uh, we talks about in the time of decision, a sister who could not make her mind between two brothers and she put it for so long and she lost both of them because of negligence don't stay between two opinions for long because a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways sin will keep you from reading your bible or reading your bible will keep you from sin god promised that you will never neglect us when you have something to do make sure you do it when you have strength to do it even esther was told when mordecai sent a letter uh, through um he sent a letter to to esther there to say um, if you don't rise at this time how do you know that you are in the palace for such a time as this and if you don't do something deliverance will come from another if you are negligent god will replace you Go to, you will call the stones, children of Abraham, out of the stones. And that's when Esther arose and said, no, I won't be negligent. She says, if I perish, let me perish. She knew the powers of a queen. And you as Mrs. Jesus, you have powers, but we have lived an underprivileged life because of negligence. We are watching decorative courts in the spoken word. That you have power to move mountains. You have power to speak another world into existence. You have power to call God on the scene don't just watch those things put them into action now there is Esau Esau was uh, negligent the birthright that was supposed to propel him forward he despised it he neglected the birthright the Holy Spirit you must focus on that because that is the power of the world to come never neglect your birthright now the Bible talks about Eli and it's a good example to all of us that God says about Eli that his children went well wayward and he did not restrain them. Here is a parent who is a priest, who is a pastor, a parent with such an anointing, even when his children are down, that he could tell Hannah that, Hannah, go your way, it's over. And it happens that way. He is a powerful minister. And then his children are doing wrong things and he does not restrain them. If your children are watching wrong things and you don't restrain them. If your children are with wrong friends and wrong influence and you don't restrain them, you will pay dearly because the house of Eli paid dearly. God said through Samuel that there will never be an old man in that house. And there was death, there was a cupboard, or it was chaos. That house was destroyed for, because Eli knew what to do, but he did not do it. Remember also that the children of Samuel did the same uh, they went against the ways of Samuel like the children of Eli but he restrained them and when they did their own things but he had told them that this is wrong God did not punish him because he restrained them when you see your teenager boy doing something and you say ah, he, he just likes being among girls one day you pay dearly and when you look at your young girls in the home there and you are negligent with the growth of your young girl. One day there will be incest. One day there will be chaos in the home. But as a mother, be diligent. Be vigilant. Now, negligence must never be seen. You must not neglect reading the word or testifying 
or consecration or fasting. Now it's December, there is someone who has eaten wire wire. From January, they are eating. Even if they have nothing good to eat, they are eating. That is negligence. As a Christian, you need desperate measures in desperate hours. There has to be a time where you say, now, as a person, not as the church, I'm having all night prayer. As a person, I'm fasting. And you fast. Many of you are crying in business. You know, God's laws are simple. I was talking to my good friend. He was just laughing and saying, ah, God's laws are very simple. If you don't understand the seals and you are praying to understand, go to a teacher, a brother with a teaching ministry. Of course, revelation cannot be taught, but some, you will have a starting point. If you are struggling, maybe, um, a, 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 and you are sick, and what, go to a gifted brother. He will lay hands and you are healed. And if you are struggling in business, simple, pay your tithes. How can you be blessed in business when you don't pay your tithes? So that you have more tithes to eat. <laughs> there are simple principles that you follow. And negligence is a dangerous thing. It is a dangerous thing to do that. Dangerous to neglect your body. Yeah. Even your physical body. It's dangerous to neglect it. Don't just eat everything. You know, they are healthy foods. And uh, keep your body uh, fit and not prone to diseases because of your diet run and exercise do something a little exercise profited little but get that little also now um, if medicine if the, if the doctor gives you that name medicine it is dangerous to neglect the balm of your soul also so as much as if you neglect the prescription that the doctor gave you it's dangerous it's also dangerous to neglect the spiritual prescription the balm of your soul repent and be baptized in the name of jesus christ so work on yourself repent and make everything right now when nebuchadnezzar did not follow the ways of god when he daniel the prophet to instruct him to show him the ways he paid dearly seven years for negligence his hair grew he was like an animal but i like that woman who when she lost one thing she did not she had 10 jewels when she lost one not two she was not negligent she started sweeping looking for what is lost when you lose something spiritual don't wait for the pastor to preach about it rise right there and claim what belongs to you contend for the faith contend for what belongs to you don't put it too long and just make sure you receive what belongs to you there is a man with all bands and he was now extending them in the bible and the christ says god came to that man and said thou fool he was a successful businessman but he was neglecting higher things things that are higher and nobler the things of the gospel and that day he died and what shall a man give in exchange for his soul don't allow negligence if you have a talent don't neglect it don't neglect your redemption don't neglect the promises of God. Don't live an underprivileged life. Don't neglect your birthright. You press in because there is coming a time when you will scream and cry to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but it will be shut from you. While you have this time and chance, make sure you use it. There is a balm in Gilead. God's presence is here to answer all your needs. But let's never lose that chance. He says, is there no palm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of my, the daughters of my people not restored? That is negligent. You have the medicine. You have the message. You have all what you need in this journey. But you are just negligent. Your, I will read um, my last scripture so that I can close. The Bible says in Joshua 16 verse 18, How long are you slack to go and possess the land? To be slack means you are negligent. It means everything has been done for you. Christ has paid the price and the messenger has come. Elijah has done his work. Restoration has been given. The pillar of fire is here and all promises are hanging over you. How long are you slack? How long are you negligent? By now, as a message believer, you should be having all what you desire if there is no negligence in your life. Now, um, before I finish that scripture, let me bring this because it comes to my mind. 
one of the greatest negligences that Christians have is unconfessed sin. And you pay dearly for that one. There is that woman who was a deacon, um, was a Sunday school teacher, her husband was a deacon, Chevrolet company, you know about it. She even became insane because of negligence, because of unconfessed sin. No matter what if we have done, no matter what mistakes, no matter what you have passed, what you passed through, uh, make sure you confess it clear with God. There is a crimson stream of blood. There is a fountain filled with blood. You can be cleansed. You can be forgiven. You can be pardoned. And you can have a new start with Christ under the power of his blood. But if you neglect confessing, the devil will destroy you. That locust and canker will canker you. That sin is at the gap end of your soul. You cannot live from January to December without confessing one thing. With, even to the blood of the Lord. Uh, I know some of you are the type that says, all my things are private. Uh, they, they, that's why the devil capitalizes on such a nature. Even if you are a pastor, even if you are, you, you, are a, you are a deacon, you need to always confess your sins. Not everything is confessed to men, but some things are confessed to God, but not all things are confessed to God. Some things you confess your sins one to another. So coming back to my scripture. Um, use every sermon receive every possess we have said that this December you have to close the air high in style now I'm going back to my scripture and I'm closing in about 5 minutes it reminds me of a testimony that happened this week uh, there's a brother that I told uh, I think on on Friday that it, on Thursday evening that on Friday I'm going for an auction because I believe every year I must receive at least one more property uh, to get more blessings from God so that there is no unclaimed blessing. So I saw there were BCC stands that were being auctioned. So we went to Holland auction there. So when I was standing there and I knew God would give me a piece of land, I got mine a bit expensive, you know, it was, but I got it yeah, about almost 10,000 square meters in in Newton West this brother shocked me he says brother Nguyen you are sitting just next to me my land I will get it I'm claiming it now but I will get it for 1.5 I won't exceed 1.5 that is my faith I said brother that's big yeah? that's great you can say how much you get it when there are so many bidders in the house and the people were really bidding what shocked me was this brother is one of our pastors here he starts beating and they went 1.2 1.4 1.45 he looks at me he says i told you um at 1.5 i'm getting it when they got to 1.5 all others lowered their cards and he remained alone i think in that whole auction that was the lowest ever bid. <laughs> and he got it. And I said, mm, I missed something. I should have said something myself. <laughs> when you believe something, don't be slack. Don't be negligent. Speak it before it happens. And claim it. He says, how long are you slack to go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you as we stand to our feet? You can claim every inch of ground. You can claim what belongs to you. Now, it behooves us to fulfill all righteousness. When you claim, 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 and nothing happens, go back and check your life. Because when God promises, he cannot bless upon a sinful life. He cannot just bless a sinner that is, uh, has nothing to do with God but the blessings of God. So when you declare, 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 and nothing happens, go and check your life. Then you'll find God opening the doors that is a simple law of god and it's a principle how long are you slept to possess the land we have a few days before december ends but i believe and i declare also that no one should be short of a testimony in whatever measure you want it let something happen in your life in whatever level in whether spiritual or what let something claim it and let it happen now, as we close our eyes, each one praying, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you after this teaching time. 
teaching subject as we are speaking lord father about how we should be vigilant and diligent not slack and uh, not negligent father i pray that lord we will put more earnest heed to the things that we have heard the message that is confirmed the message that is vindicated father may we give everything to it and father in every level let us be vigilant let us not be negligent even in family time let's have that family altar let's have father time father is sweet with the family where the husband is not tired but is there with the children teaching them the ways of life where the pastors are also there for their families after going and doing everything father may we stand and see our families growing in the things of god father i pray as i have declared already that your children may you visit them father that they may claim the blessing that belongs to them may they never allow negligence father every promise is before us everything is hanging over us that if we do a jump of faith we can receive our blessing those who need the holy spirit father may you overshadow them those father who are failing to pray may they take a new step to say from now on i will give more earnest heed those who are failing to listen to the message may they give that resolution to say from now on i will give more time to listen to the message father those who are not yet baptized in your name may they never be negligent may they give themselves those who are not paying their tithes father they have no excuse that is real negligence those who are not supporting father by testifying by giving their testimony may they start testifying for the glory of god father those who are bound in situations those who are bound in conditions those who are bound by evil dreams those who are bound by sin those who are bound by family spirits how can they escape if they neglect so great the salvation father for them to escape their conditions let them be saved let them have a relationship with you let them believe let them know that he that has promised is more than able to give what he has promised heavenly father may you bring this teaching subject to life by visiting your people by answering their desires may we never have negligent mothers may we never have negligent fathers may we never have negligent youth may we never have negligent ministers but each man in his post of duty let them never procrastinate but let them stand for what is right let them stand for the truth let them tell somebody about salvation let them apply the token how can we stand and our families are perishing our extended families don't know about the message that is negligence we pray father that give us father not to neglect the gifts in us there is a gift in each one of us but we must not neglect the gift that god has put in us those who are supposed to sing let them sing those who are supposed to finance let them finance those who are supposed to be prayer warriors let them never neglect their gift let them pray and pray until mountains move those who are called with a gift of faith to move mountains heavenly father let us not neglect father we realize that time is fast spent we realize that the rapture is at hand father what shall we say when we stand on the judgment by our lord father and we see the souls that we have not told about you that we have not told about the powers of christ father we pray that our bodies our spiritual our soul our businesses our financial investments our everything father we should not neglect whatever you have given us let us be good stewards to keep it and to produce even more i pray this evening father that the light of your presence will come down upon every believer father whether they are online or here may you answer all their desires may you revive them father teach them to be diligent teach them to be vigilant whatever they have claimed this year let them never neglect whatever they have written in their bibles let them never neglect if there be any unclean way in their life may they check it up may they make it right may they repent may they confess may they be cleansed may they be empowered by your spirit may they stand restored and father stand as a victorious church father i pray if there be any need or desire that is still not accomplished in those who are claiming father the blessings for this year in these few days father that are remaining may testimonies abound may it become a regular routine of your performance those who are online father and those who are here 
May they see your angel moving in power, moving in glory, performing the greater works that you promised. And I believe every promise is hanging over us to grab it. I bless you, Father, and I believe you have heard your children. Bless us as we dismiss and answer the needs of your children. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We have come to the end of the service. Go and digest these things. I was just taking a teaching approach so that you cannot be a victim of negligence. In, it's in every field. It's in every field. Make sure you put into action what God has said. Don't be hearers only, but be doers. We'll sing as we shall dismiss. Our next service will be on Friday, uh, online, 7 o'clock. We don't know if we're going to be able to do the crossover. So if we are not able to do the crossover, uh, if restrictions are there, we'll have online crossover. But here at City Tepanegu and uh, in Pumula Luveve, in all our churches, we'll meet just to have, to close the air with a service. Maybe another church will start at 7, others will start at 8, whatever. And then we meet, and those few who have come at 8 or so, we can take the communion. I don't believe we can end the year without communion and uh, take it, doing it as often. We will have communion in Pumula, in Lufebe, in all our satellites. And then we here will meet also. And then at 12 midnight, we'll have an online crossover. So pray for the services. Now we are busy. Right now, uh, we are buying material because we are already building the stand in uh, building the wall in Pumla South. We told you this year, God gave us a stand in Pumla South. We always desired that stand. But somehow, God reserved it towards the end of the year. He gave us the stand. So we are already erecting pillars. Now, then on the 25th of December, we have a special Christmas. Um... The brothers went today to just check where it can be done. We thought to remember just maybe 100 poor children. We have never eaten Christmas, you know what I mean. We have never eaten something nice. We have never dressed in anything nice. Our efforts will be on those 100. We're going to buy them the food. We're going to get, if they are young, we'll get them the toys. We'll get them anything that can beautify their lives and pump them with pipes and spoken word just to show that charity is, it begins in the house of God so that we can have impact also it doesn't matter their denomination even if they are Catholic or whatever as long as they are such poor people so the brothers pastors out there in Dabazinduna because we, it may be in Dabazinduna it may be in God's mind we don't know but we are still finishing the touches but they asked me to say, um, since the parents will also come, and we're going to be taking it maybe 100 by 100, we don't know how many we shall take. They say, those who have clothes that they are not using, uh, surrender and we go and give someone to look nice when they had no chance to. We will give them nice meals and Kentucky and everything, fried chicken. That has never been in such a mouth. And that is another of Christianity so we are saying to you because we are the church but otherwise it's supposed to be something secret but since we are doing it as a group as the church we need those who can contribute anything to do so then we make impact in someone's life God bless you we will sing as we dismiss Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Oh, until we meet, till.
again until we meet until we meet till we meet at Jesus feet till we meet